In this video, I'll show you how to solve the Alex problem called calculating entropy change from reversible heat flow. So as you can see for this problem, we've been given the value of delta H for a particular process, and we're being asked to calculate the change in entropy for that process. The relationship between entropy and enthalpy is delta S equals delta H over T. And this is the temperature in Kelvin. So all that we have to do is plug in the value of delta H and then plug in the temperature. We've got that down here and that's going to give us delta S. It's um, unfortunately, it's not quite as simple as plugging this number in and plugging this number in. There's a little bit of conversion that we have to do um, before we can plug those numbers in. So first of all, the first thing we have to do is figure out exactly what our delta H is. It tells us that we have a delta H of 28 kilojoules per mole but we don't have or we may not have one mole of our substance it's also telling us that we have 491 grams of our substance so we have to figure out how many moles of this we have so that we can figure out exactly what our delta h value is we don't want it in units of kilojoules per mole so the first thing that i'm going to do is take this 491 grams of dichloromethane ch2cl2 and i'm going to convert that number into moles using the molecular weight of the dichloromethane one mole of CH2Cl2 is 12 plus 2 plus 35 and a half plus 35 and a half. You should be using exact molecular weights, not rounding like I'm doing. 85 grams per mole for CH2Cl2. So we have, in this 491 gram sample, we have 5.776 moles. Now we're gonna use this number along with our value of delta H to figure out exactly how many kilojoules we're talking about. The problem is telling us 28 kilojoules for every one mole, but we have 5.776 moles. So again, this is gonna tell us exactly how much heat, our enthalpy, delta H is. 161.7 kilojoules, because those mole units cancel. So this is the actual value of delta H that we wanna plug into this equation. Again, we're not gonna use this number, we wanna get an exact number. Now there's one more thing we need to think about before we stick this number into delta H for this equation. And we've gotta read the problem really carefully. So the problem is telling us that we have, um, this is the delta H of vaporization. So this is the delta H of going from a liquid to a gas, that's the vaporization process. Now we have to be really careful to make sure that's actually what's happening in this reaction or in this problem. The problem is telling us we wanna calculate the change in entropy when it condenses. And condensation is the reverse. Condensation is going from a gas to a liquid. So um, when the delta H that's provided to you doesn't match up exactly with the process that you're actually dealing with, you've got to think about how is that going to affect the delta H. When we take a chemical reaction and we reverse it, so if we go from a liquid to a gas and then we reverse it going from a gas to a liquid, all that we have to do is reverse the, the sign of the delta H value. And hopefully you remember that from the, the chapter that you did on energy. So this is the delta H for vaporization. We'll make a little note of that. This is delta H of vaporization, but this is the delta H of the condensation, and we're trying to calculate entropy for condensation. So this is the number, this, with the negative sign, is what we actually wanna plug into this equation negative 161.7 kilojoules. Now, you're not always gonna have to reverse the sign in all of these Alex problems, so don't just assume automatically that you're gonna reverse the sign. You've gotta read um, and make sure and think about it before you just reverse the sign. We're gonna divide this by the temperature in Kelvin, so we've got 39.8 degrees Celsius, and we're gonna add 273.15 to turn that into Kelvin. 39.8 plus 273.15 gives us a temperature of 312.95 Kelvin. 
And now we're ready to actually solve negative 161.7 divided by 312.95 gives us a negative 517. Our units are kilojoules per Kelvin. And this problem is giving us the freedom to type in those units ourselves. So we can leave it in units of kilojoules if we want, or we could convert it into units of joules if we wanted. Negative 0.517 kilojoules per Kelvin.